Okay, now I went ahead and showed you how to solve for this by hand to give you a better sense of how that's done. But thankfully, we don't really need to do that by hand. Once you see the basic formula and understand how it's done, we don't really need to do it by hand anymore. We can use SPSS to get all the predicted values very quickly, which is really quite nice. But before we do that, I'd like to make one other note, and that is, in this example here, finding the predicted value, we have two independent variables. We have an x1 and an x2. And that's because our example had two independent variables or predictors. But this equation can extend out as far as is needed based on how many independent variables or predictors that you have. So if we had a third independent variable, then this would just say you know, b2x2 plus b3x3. And if you had a fourth predictor, plus b4x4, and so on. And then in simple regression, if we had just one predictor, then that would just disappear, and we would just have y hat equals a plus b1x1, and that would be it. So this equation is very flexible. It can expand or contract as needed, depending on the number of predictors that you have in your regression analysis. Okay, but let's go ahead and find the predicted values for this problem. Okay, so we go to Analyze, and then Regression, and then Linear. Here I want to have college GPA as my dependent variable, and then we'll move these two variables over. And then the way that I find my predicted values is I want to go to Save. And then here there's a lot of different things we can have output. And for this example, I look under Predicted Values, and I want to select Unstandardized. So go ahead and check on that. And then that's it for this example. So click Continue, and then click OK. And here we see our regression analysis was run. We see an R-square of 0.49. And here's our coefficients table. And before we go to the predicted values, I want to go ahead and double click on this and show you how I expanded these values. So if you select these values here, right click the mouse, and then go to Cell Properties. Here I can go to under decimals. I'm going to go ahead and dial this up to 5. Click apply. And this is exactly what you saw earlier at the beginning of the video. So that's how I move these, change the decimal places. Double click on the table, select the values, right click, and then go to cell properties. And you can dial them down or up as needed. Okay, now I asked for predicted values. And I do see a new table here. I have residual statistics. And here's the predicted value in the first row. So that's what I want. Uh, residual we'll talk about in another video, but for now we'll just bypass that. Notice the predicted values. The minimum predicted value was 2.61 in terms of GPA. The maximum was 3.85, rounding to two decimal places. And then we see a mean predicted value, standard deviation, as well as the sample size. So, but that doesn't show me the individual predicted values. The way I find that is I go back to my data editor, and then notice here there's a new column, PRE underscore 1. And that's just the default by SPSS for predicted values. And our first column of predicted values, if I ran multiple analyses, I might have a PRE 2 if I had a second set of predicted values. Or if I ran this again, asked for predicted values, I'd get a PRE 2 and so forth. Okay, so here we have the predicted values. And notice here I have 3.44 as we saw before and my actual is 3.45, so that was very close. For person number two, I have 3.05 predicted, and their actual GPA was 3.10. So that was off by about 0.05, and that's quite close as well. And then after that, this is off by about 0.21. So for person number three, the model didn't work quite as well. The predicted GPA was off more so from the actual than for person one and two. And you'll always see this, there's gonna be variability. For some people, the model will work quite well. For others, it won't work as well. And then for a few people, or more, sometimes it will be off quite a bit. And to get a better sense of the difference between the actual and predicted values, let's go back and run the analysis one more time. So I'll go to Analyze, Regression, Linear. And then here I'm going to go to Save once again. And now I'm going to save the residuals and click on Unstandardized. So these two match. They're both unstandardized. Click Continue, and then click OK. I'm going to go back to my data editor, 
Now notice here, there's that PRE2, like I said, it would come out again. It's the same values because we asked for the same analysis twice. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that. And then here we go. Notice I have RES underscore 1, and that stands for residual. So this tells me my actual GPA is 3.45, my predicted is about 3.44, and the residual is the discrepancy or the difference between the actual and the predicted GPA. So by looking at this column, we can very quickly see how well the model did, the regression model, for each person. Person 1, as we saw earlier, did very good. Let's scroll down and see if we can find any large values here. Notice this one here, negative 0.95. That's off by quite a bit. So here the person's actual GPA was 2.35. Their predicted GPA was 3.30. So notice how that was predicted almost one grade point higher than the actual. And there's a reason for this. If you look at this here, notice their SAT score was 1170. Now here we're using the traditional SAT values where the mean was 1000. So 1170 was quite above the mean. They did very well on the SAT. But notice in terms of their actual GPA, they really didn't do that great. They were a C average, a 2.35 grade point average. So this was a person who had a pretty strong aptitude, but their performance didn't really match their SAT score. So probably either maybe they worked too much or there was a motivational issue, uh, they were distracted, or maybe they suffered from procrastination or what have you. But for whatever reason, they underperformed. But the model, because their SAT score was high, it predicted a higher GPA than was actually the case. And you can see that elsewhere as well. This is our biggest one here, biggest discrepancy. Notice here they had a 2.11 GPA, and they were predicted at 3.12. And that was probably due to their high social support score and their SAT around the mean. But the social support score probably had the most influence here in why the predicted value was about one point higher than the actual. Now once again, R squared, the overall measure of the variance accounted for, that tells us how well our model did. For individual cases, there will be some that are very close, and there'll be some that are further off, and so on. But remember, overall, this model is doing really quite well at predicting college GPA. Because we accounted for, I believe it was 49% of the variance. Your R squared, 0.49. So we accounted for 49% of the variance. In other words, SAT score and social support, when taken together, they accounted for almost half of the variance in first year college GPA. So they did a good job overall. And as a review from an earlier analysis, they were both significant. So both predictors were significant. And overall, they did a pretty good job. But on an individual case-by-case -case basis, we will have some for whom the model did not do a very good job at predicting. That's just the way it is. But overall, the model did quite well. Okay, so that's a basic introduction to predicted values. And then we also got to see residuals here. And we will look at residuals in more detail in another video, and we'll be coming back to predicted values as well, as these are both really quite helpful in increasing our understanding of multiple regression. So in other videos, we'll be visiting these again, and we'll see how knowing, for example, the predicted values can help us to understand R-squared from a different perspective, and how knowing residuals will also give us some insight into the regression analysis and so on. This concludes the video on finding predicted values in regression. Thanks for watching.